Today we begin the church's year with the first Sunday of Advent. Holy Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Bill and Moya Campbell. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Dominus Fabiscum. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. Miseriata nostri omnipotens Deus, et dimissis peccatis nostris, perducat nos et vita meta Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, yourself are our Father, our Redeemer is your ancient name. Why, Lord, leave us to stray from your ways and harden our hearts against fearing you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down. At your presence, the mountains would melt. No ear has heard. No eye has seen any God, but you act like this. For those who trust him, you guide those who act with integrity and keep your ways in mind. You were angry when we were sinners. We had long been rebels against you. We were all like men unclean, all that integrity of ours like filthy clothing. We have all withered like leaves, and our sins blew us away like the wind. No one invoked your name or roused himself to catch hold of you, for you hid your face from us and gave us up to the power of our sins. And yet, Lord, you are our Father, we the clay, you the potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Peter.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ send you grace and peace. I never stop thanking God for all the graces you have received through Jesus Christ. I thank him that you have been enriched in so many ways, especially in your teachers and preachers. The witness to Christ has indeed been strong amongst you, so that you will not be without any of the gifts of the Spirit while you are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. And he will keep you steady and without blame until the last day, the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, because God, by calling you, has joined you to his Son, Jesus Christ, and God is faithful. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. It is like a man travelling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task, and he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. So stay awake because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Evening, midnight, cock crow, dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't often tell people this, but twice in my life I've had to spend time in prison. During my third year in the seminary, my weekly pastoral work that I was assigned was an afternoon a week in Wormwood Scrubs, the lifer's wing. And then in my second appointment as an assistant priest, one of my weekly duties was to celebrate Mass in Bullwood Hall, which was not very far from here. It's now closed. It's a, a housing development. But I would say that both of those apostolates, both of those ministries, were amongst the most fulfilling and fruitful, personally, for me. Not sure what the others got out of it, but it was a privilege for me, at least, to be entrusted with many cases often of broken lives people that you could help in a very positive way and indeed you start to learn very quickly how we should never ever be surprised 
at our human nature and the depths into which we can descend. I recall when shortly after his election as Pope, Pope Francis went to the Roman jail and he said to the inmates, I think to myself, I too could be here. That is, none of us can be sure that we would never commit a crime, something for which we'd be put in prison. There but for the grace of God go I. Now, we may never have murdered someone, or we may never have robbed a bank, or put someone in A&E, yet but for the grace of God. Everyone makes mistakes, everyone sins. And if one person's personal history and circumstances were different, he or she could be that convict. That's why we stand, each of us, in need of a saviour. We stand in need of being saved. And that's the nature of Advent. That's what we are waiting for in Advent. We're waiting to be saved. We're waiting for our saviour. And Jesus is the one who has rescued us, has saved us. The one who has done something which we could never have done for ourselves. And until we feel what it's like to be lost and helpless, we won't understand who Jesus is and what he means for me. Now this concept of salvation or redemption comes from the Latin redemere, which means a buying back or the process of getting a kidnapped person back. If someone has been held for ransom and their family has paid the money, they've been redeemed. They've been bought back. And if you happen to be held ransom, there's not much you can do about it except wait for someone to come and pay the ransom and save you. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. The meaning of that line from the famous hymn of Advent has to sink deep into our hearts. Only then will we get the meaning of this season. It's as though we were all in prison and we can't get out of prison. We can't save ourselves. So we wait and we watch. Now we all know that our culture militates in a thousand ways against this attitude precisely at this time because it ceaselessly teaches us the ideology of self-esteem, of self-assertion. It's expressed in contemporary culture in so many ways, in lyrics like, I'm beautiful in every single way, and your words can't bring me down. How often do we not hear that from the lips of young people and not so young people? Who are you to tell me how to behave? Who are you to tell me what to think? Because our culture is teaching us in a million ways, I can do it on my own. I am capable. I can assert myself. But this is the antithesis of biblical Christianity. The biblical view is this, that through the abuse of my freedom, we've got ourselves into an impossible hole, an impossible mess. Sin has compromised us in such a fundamental way that we become, spiritually speaking, dysfunctional. Now, we're made for human connection, we're made for justice, for non-violence, but in every way we're pulled in the opposite direction. We're wandering, wandering, in the words of St. Augustine, wandering in the land of unlikeness. We are made in the image and likeness of God, but we are wandering in the land of unlikeness unto him. And if you doubt any of this, and I recommend even a casual viewing of the news, if you haven't already given up watching the news. Because it's not pessimism, it's a deep realism. We can't solve our problems through an act of our will. It's like being stuck in quicksand. The more you try to extricate yourself from the quicksand to struggle to get out of it, the worse you make it as you sink into it. So we heed the words of Isaiah in the first reading, which is really the keynote address for Advent. 
You were angry when we were sinners. We had long been rebels against you. We were all like people unclean. Because there is a mess. And we sense this mess. And we sense that we can't clear it up ourselves. Like someone in the grip of an addiction. Where they're not in control anymore. Because the word addiction has got its roots in a word that means voiceless. I've lost my voice. I'm not in control of myself. Anyone who's been in the grip of any addiction will tell you there's nothing he or she can do for themselves to lift them out of the problem. That is why in the 12-step program, a person having hit rock bottom must turn their life over to a higher power. You have to surrender to a force beyond your own will. Why? Because your will is the problem. It's been taken over. It's often that family or friends will have to break through the defences to convince that person that they need help. Now all of this is applicable to the spiritual realm. We need help. We can't do it ourselves. We're stuck. All of us since our birth have been marked by the effects of sin, original sin, and this has found its way into society at every level, into our personal lives, into the institutions. We will be hopelessly naive to think otherwise. So a poor dysfunctional family, the family of mankind, needs not just a philosopher, not just a social theorist, not a political activist or a military hero, because they are in a dysfunctional family too. What we need is a saviour, someone who can break into our dysfunction from the outside and heal us. That is why it is of supreme importance that we say that Jesus Christ is fully human, which is how he can enter into our situation. And how we must also say he is truly divine, because he is in a very real sense outside of our dysfunction. Just look at the beautiful image with which Isaiah ends the first reading. You are the potter, and we are the clay. We are all the work of your hands. We need the intervention of a loving God who will shape us anew just as he shaped the Blessed Mother by her submission to God's will. Because we can't do it ourselves. We can't break out of prison by our own efforts. We need a saviour. And when we feel that in our bodies, in our very being, then we're ready for Advent. Praise be Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have heaven. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken with the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As we wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed, we turn trustfully to God for some of our needs. For ourselves, that during this season of Advent, we would grow in the virtue of hope and desire to see Christ in his glory. Lord, hear us. For the bishops of the church throughout the world, may they faithfully proclaim Jesus Christ as one saviour and be true shepherds to the flocks entrusted to them. Lord, hear us. For peace in our world, especially in the Middle East and Ukraine, that the people of war may be converted and turned back to God. Lord, hear us. For those who have died recently, Kenneth B. Book, Suzanne Reynolds, and Nick Flack. Also for the dead whose anniversaries occur about this time, may their souls and the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us join our prayers to those of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we say, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. In silence, let us bring before the Lord our own special intentions. Father, you reveal your mercy in your Son, Jesus Christ. Protect us from all anxiety as we now await the glorious coming of our Saviour, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your many gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through who Christ our Lord, for he had assumed at his first give, coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all that is at last made manifest, we who wait for that day may inherit the great promise by which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaos, Plenis Uncei Eterna, Gloria Tu, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all who created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, <coughs> Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> Mr. 
misterium fidei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Xavier and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance, the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion. O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti in unitate spiritus sancti, omnes honor et gloria, per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. Precepte salutaribus moniti, e divina institutione formati, audemus dicere, Pater Noster, qui es in Cielis, Santificetu Nomen Tuo, Adveniat a Renum Tuo, Iat Voluntas Tua, Sicut in Cielo et in Terra, Anem Nostum Quotidian, la nobis odie, et dimite nobis nebita nostra, sicut et nos dimitibus nebitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentatio, sed libera nos amado. Libera nos quesimus domini ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostis, ut ofe misericordiae tui ed iuti, et a peccatus imus semper liberi, et ab omnipotubatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Qui atum est regnum et potestas, et gloria in secula. Domini Iesu Christi, qui dixisti apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam da vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesia tue, eom que secundum voluntatem tua, pacificare et coadunare dineris, qui vivis et regnas in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et consieris utum. We show each other some sign of peace. Peace.
Ece anus dei, ece qui tolit peccata mundi, viati qui a cena mandi vocati sunt. Domine non sum dignus, ut interes sub tectum meum, set tantum dic verbo, et san abito anima meum.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amidst passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. This Friday the 8th of December is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of Our Blessed Lady. The Mass is at noon on Friday, but in the evening at 7 o'clock there will be the Holy Rosary. The consecration of the parish to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which we do every year on this feast, concluding with benediction. Copies of the 2024 Brentwood Yearbook are on sale at the back of the church for £2.95. And this Sunday, the Christmas Bazaar is taking place in the parish centre throughout the morning, concluding at lunchtime, which on my time table is one o'clock. Nominus Fabiscum. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Ita emihi sa est, Thank you. 